Blue perfect subjunctive is the second subjunctive tense that we are going to learn. It has something in common with the imperfect subjunctive. And so it becomes the second easiest tense to learn in the subjunctive mood. The pluperfect active form begins with the perfect infinitive. For those of you who need a little refresher on what the perfect infinitive looks like, you start with the third principal part and you add SSE. After the perfect infinitive, all you have to do is tack on these subjunctive endings. And these subjunctive endings are consistent across the subjunctive mood in the active voice. The pluperfect subjunctive has a close relationship with the imperfect subjunctive from this standpoint. The imperfect subjunctive begins with the present infinitive and then tacks on the endings mst, mustis, int. The pluperfect subjunctive will start with the perfect infinitive and then again tack on the endings. Let's see what this looks like. Here are some actual pluperfect forms that you translated in your chapter 42 story. Now we got wisemus, we had sailed. We nisemus, we had come. Apro pinqua wisem, I had approached. Each of these features a prototypical pluperfect translation that features the word had. Our translation has not changed between indicative and subjunctive. The form has changed slightly. Here you have the perfect infinitive, no we go with say, and then you have the personal ending mus. Third principal part, weini, s-s-e, and then the personal ending mus. And then you have this very long version of a pluperfect subjunctive that features the perfect infinitive apro pinqua wisse, and then the personal ending is m. Pluperfect passive subjunctive is a bit of a different element. You start with the fourth principal part, which is exactly how we started creating the pluperfect passive indicative back when we learned it in November. If we're starting at the same place with the fourth principal part, we are still working essentially on having to differentiate between the indicative and the subjunctive. So the way in which we're going to differentiate our pluperfect passive forms is in the helper verb, the auxiliary verb. When we learned the pluperfect passive indicative, we said that there was a fourth principal part that was with a form of eram. Eram, eras, erat, eramus, eratus, erat. In order to make this form fully subjunctive, we're actually going to use the subjunctive form of eram. As you know from Latin 1, eram is the imperfect tense of the irregular verb sum. So we're going to make that imperfect tense of the irregular verb sum in the subjunctive. The reason you learn your imperfect subjunctive first is in order to create stuff like this. The imperfect subjunctive of the verb sum again has the infinitive, which here is esse, and then a personal ending. Sm, ss, set, semis, assetis, asset. So these six verbs serve as the auxiliary or helper verb with the fourth principal part. Just a reminder, <clears throat> since deponent verbs do not have a fourth principal part, we take the first half of the third principal part and use that for our pluperfect passive. <coughs> With pluperfect passive verbs, we see them looking like this. Rogati assent, they had been asked. Capti assemis, we had been captured. Percussus assem, I had been struck. Again, we see that quintessential pluperfect use of the English word had. It's passive in form because the subject is having the action done to it. And here we're starting out with a fourth principal part and then we're pairing it with this subjunctive form of errant.
Here, we marry the passive forms with active translations in the realm of deponent verbs. So pluperfect deponent verbs look passive, but they get translated actively. Konati assent, they had tried. Regressi assemus, we had returned. Adortus assem, I had attacked. If you have any questions about this or any other material, please feel free to see me, period 9.